Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Patera with you today. We are going to be talking about diatomaceous earth. Of all the videos, well there's several, but this is one of the most popular uh, requests that I get because I mentioned DE so much. So this is my first video to talk about it and it's just worked out that way. So we're gonna, I've got a new bag here, so it's the time to talk about it. I use diatomaceous earth on my farm. I feed it to all of my animals in terms of putting it in their feed from my cats, my dogs, my goats, my chickens, uh, my ducks, and my dairy cows. I do not have the problem I feel that many other farms may have because of this application in my feed rations. Diatomaceous earth, we've been using it. We use the white food grade. I want to make that very clear. The reason you see a difference in a lot of your um, food complex or food grade or whatever uh, diatomaceous earth brands is because some are white and then some are not. They've got this brownish, ruddy, clay, gray looking color that's due uh, to maybe iron content in that, clay content in that. We go with the pure grade white fossil flower, okay? I use Permagard. I don't know how well you can see that. You can look them up online. You can buy it on Amazon. My local co-op gets this in, and a lot of the farmers are starting to pick up on how well this works for them. So you, so at my handy-dandy uh, co-op, they sell it now in the 50-pound bags, which is how I buy it. What it is, it's a fossilized form of diatoms, okay, and uh, so they, they're mining this and when it's applied in many different forms, particularly in food rations or if you use it for tick or flea control, it basically kills every bug going around. Um, so that's why I place it in my feeds. I think that it helps to detox the bodies of the animals and of ourselves. It is going to cleanse you of parasites. Uh, in a human form, people take it with water. Some folks take it once a day or twice a day. I can I take it once a day when I go through a period of taking it, and I only take it in the morning. Uh, that's what works best for me. But we're talking about it in terms of giving it to your chickens, your goats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's different ways that you can apply this to your food ration. Folks want to know what I do, so that's all I'm going to talk about. I've done this in two different ways. You can cut the bags, and you can put your DE in. Typically for like my dog foods or my cat foods, that tends to work really well. I will put in a f half a cup, fourth of a cup, somewhere in between there, into the top of the bag, work it in, and then do that again later on. That, because it coats the food. I will tell you that uh, when it comes to, because I go through my chicken feed, my chick feed, and all of my feeds for my farm animals so fast, I tend to go with a daily ration in terms of sprinkling it on top. Um, you know, I just do a sprinkle system. Now, I'm going to let you do your homework in terms of how safe is DE and does it work for you. You need to do your own homework in terms of what works best for you and your farm. This is not the silica form. This is the amorphous form. So only 1% is silica. A lot of folks will tell you not to breathe it and, and do all of these things. Yes, I'm going to take, listen, anytime you're working with a powdered form of anything on your farm, you need to always take precaution in terms of whether it's going to irritate your skin or whether you should breathe it. Use common sense, folks. I always tell people I don't go around the barn. You know, I, I think folks get this notion in their heads that we're cutting open these big old fossil flower bags and sprinkling around this stuff like flour you'd see in a bakery movie, you know, in a bakery or whatever. It's not like that, okay? What I do and what I have figured out, what I feel works best for me, and this is so high tech, let me tell you, is you can buy sprinkle jars and make them, but this is the best one I, I feel is to get a large, you know, the tub, the tumbler, the large um, plastic coffee container, whatever coffee you want. Okay, they're pretty sturdy, and I fill it up with the DE, and I took a knife or scissors or whatever, and I made some fairly large little holes here, but they're still partly closed, and I just sprinkle. Okay, I sprinkle it on the foods. Uh, I like to make sure that my animals, particularly my cows, my goats, my pigs, it, everybody gets DE in the morning. They get their minerals, they get their herbs, they get their DE every, every morning. I don't do the whole situation where you give them the DE for a period of four days, six days, and stop. It's consistent here. Let me tell you why I keep it consistent. 
when I got my goats, and I've talked about this before, um, within a few days of having my goats, they, we recognized that they had tapeworms. Not abnormal for goats to have tapeworms, but very unpleasant nonetheless. So long story short, I wanted to treat them. And at first I wasn't sure what to do. What do I get? What should I do? I thought, you know what? I've been using DE on my chickens so far for quite a while. We're not having any issues. Let's go that route. Four days after beginning to give my two goats consistent DE ration in their food, which is 2% or less, okay? That's the ration you want to use for your feeds. I went down to the shed, and I will attach a picture of this, by the way. Um, this has been three years ago, and um, I noticed something very strange in the bottom of the flooring, which I knew by the poop size of the goat, the goat droppings, that it was from the mama goat and not the baby goat, okay, her doe. And so um, it was a tapeworm. It wasn't just a tapeworm. There were multiple small tapeworms that are very small, but they look like rice. You can recognize them very easily. There was one, and I'll attach a picture or two. It was approximately an inch wide and 18 inches to two feet long. No joke. This is what pushed it out, folks. So I just want, at that moment, I knew that something was going right with the DE. So therefore, I have kept it consistent in my feed with my goats. I have not had a problem with my goats since then. Uh, and I check, we check them c consistently, you know, in terms of that. My chickens are overall extremely healthy. We have, you know, a random moment, but has nothing to do with something like this. My cows, I give it to them. Just, I can't complain. So I just feel it's one of those moments where if you're doing something and you know it's working and you feel it's working, don't change it up. So I'm going to continue to press forward with the DE. I have tried it in my own diet. Uh, I do feel that it, uh, there's several things that you can do to help you in one of these things I, I feel can, but that's a personal thing up to you. So nonetheless, does it work? I'm going to tell you yes. I'm going to tell you I'm proud to use it. Use your head. Be smart. So I've got, uh, say I'm going to go feed some chickens to, this evening. Uh, this is just a demonstration. I've already done this. And what I do is I just, if I've got the feed, and you can see how, how nicely that's coming out. You see that? Not heavy. Not really much to breathe. Just be smart. When I apply it to my nesting boxes, I put it in there. I do my fresh hay. I do a little sprinkle. Put my pine shavings in. You can put your herbs in. You can do whatever. Just be consistent with it. That is my uh, own personal feeling on diatomaceous earth. Because when you get your animals on a good health flow and you, the problems are not there, it's a really good preventative measure. This is not to say, per se, that you may not ever have a problem with something down the road, but I do think that a little bit of prevention goes a long way. I hope this helps you out. I hope this answers some of your questions on how we approach using diatomaceous earth food grade white here on our farm. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest and all the cool places we are. And I hope you like my new tripod. Yeah, you're not shaking around, are you? It's pretty nice. I like it. We'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care out there. Okay, P.S. Let me go over this because I know I left it out and I know you're going to ask. So I'm just going to just do a bullet form of listing here. These are the places and ways that I use my DE. I use it in all of my feeds. I have used it on top of the backs of some of my animals, particularly when I felt they had ticks. I have removed ticks from my pigs and from my cow using diatomaceous earth. I have killed fleas off of my dogs using diatomaceous earth. I also put it in my barn. Typically when I clean and I'm putting down fresh bedding, I'll do a little sprinkle. Same application goes for all of my nesting boxes. When I clean my nesting boxes and they get fresh straw and fresh bedding and pine shavings and things, I do a sprinkle of the DE there. I also put it into my chicken scratch, just a sprinkle, no big deal. I use it in my pet food as well. I have also used it in killing fire ants. I disrupted the nest heavily and applied very liberally there though. A uh, major fire ant hill here up here on the mountain, we have an issue with fire ants. Worked like a charm there. It really did a great job. It killed them. It took them out of the area that is now my strawberry bed. 
So there's lots of ways and applications in which you can use diatomaceous earth. So I wanted to list that because somebody might ask other ways that we use it. So that's just to name a few. So do your homework and take care out there.